and welcome to my series on certificate rotations. After having retrieved our UAAC bearer token, the next thing we need to do is actually take a look at what certificates are expiring. We're going to be following a documentation for a 2.7 platform. So let's go ahead and dig in. The lab I'm going to be using is behind a VPN, so you will see credentials. Please do not worry about these. I've gone ahead and copied some of the commands from the documentation over to this notebook so I can modify them to include things such as the token variable that I have already exported to match the bearer token listed in my UAAC context. So I can show the variable is already there. And you'll see this variable replacing UAAC access token with token. You can, however, just paste this whole token in. But let's go ahead and take a look. Now you'll also see modifications in the commands that I've been running to have a dash verbose. And as I'm running a self-signed certificate, dash K for skiff SSL validation. So let's go ahead and take a look at if there's anything expiring within six months. Currently, however, it does not seem that I have anything expiring within six months. We did see, however, that the command ran successfully. So let's go ahead and run that same command, but without the six month variable. I'll go ahead and just delete that off and copy the whole curl once again. And we'll see quite a few certificates, but that output looks a little ugly. So let's go ahead and pipe this to JQ. And then we'll get all of our certificates. Now you can do this same method with a web browser, such as Chrome. And this would be our Ops Manager web interface. So this is our Ops Manager fully qualified domain name. And what we would do is go ahead and append certificate authorities, or in this case, as we're checking the leaf certificates, deployed certificates. I've installed a JQ parser, so that way the output has gone ahead and parsed similarly. Now, in this lab, I currently do not have any expiring, but let's go ahead and go under the assumption that we have a NAT certificate expiration in play. Now, your NAT certificates would be paired with your root certificates. We can see this here. This is our root certificate, and this is our NAT certificate. For every pair of root CA1 and NATS1, you will also have a corresponding entry here for the NATS CA. But let's go ahead and dig in a little further. We've checked our certificates, and let's go under the assumption that we have seen a NATS is expiring. This tells us that we would have to change our root certificate. F, for example, that our root certificate, we knew it was expiring, we would go ahead and mark it for doing a rotation as well. So let's dig into our rotating certificates and specifically rotate the root CA and leaf certificates component. So the first step, and if we split this into really three rounds, which is we add the new root CA, we activate it, and in the activation round, we also rotate the leaf and non-configurables, and then round three would be delete the old root CA. Let's get into round one. Add a new root CA. Now, as we add a new root certificate, we can do so by either supplying a certificate or using the Cred Hub API to generate a certificate. As this is all behind the platform, self-signed certificates are perfectly acceptable. This is just to encrypt communication within the platform. So we head back to our lab here, and I'm going to go ahead and skip through, bring that back, to an already completed command example. You can see this is the command from the documents, which is here, and I've gone ahead and modified it to include my Ops Manager fully qualified domain name and my token variable. Let's go ahead and fire off that command. And bam, we see that is an HTTP status 200. And then we actually see the certificates that have been exported. I want, we are nice and clear. Let's take a look now at our certificate authority. So this is before running the command, and now after running the command, 
you'll see our second certificate is in place. This is the new root certificate and its new NATS pair. You can also see this reflected in, I will refresh, I'll search for NATS again, and now you'll see we have a second pair. Now that we have generated our new root certificate, we need to go ahead and do an apply change. And you'll see this reflected in the documentation. Um, and this is, we just did the verify our certificate is there. We need to do an apply change with recreate all VMs. This is important as it'll recreate all Bosch deployed VMs, as well as run the errands for service instant tiles to both upgrade and recreate all service instances and some older platforms as well as third-party service instance tiles you may not have these errands and will need to run this command after the apply changes has finished but in our lab we do not have need of this so let's take a look the first thing we need to do is go into our bosch director tile go to director config and then we'll search for our recreate all vms checkbox we will check that box go all the way down to the bottom and click save. Now this recreate all VMs checkbox will, I apologize, will need to be checked after every successful apply changes as it will revert to an unchecked state when the apply changes completes. Now we can go through and check the errands to recreate manually, <clears throat> or we can go ahead and take a look at our review pending changes. In I believe it was 2.6 and later, um, or 2.5 and later, you should see the ability to modify these errands in the apply change. So we look at pass, everything is there. And we look at my SQL, which is a service instance tile, and we see recreate all service instance. We would go through, check each tile. There's another recreate all service instance. And then RabbitMQ also has recreate all service instances. Once we've checked all of these tiles and every error to either recreate or update a service instance, you would then apply change. Now, as this rotation does take a little bit of time, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and the audio, and we'll pick back up in just a moment once the apply change has completed. Now, this will be deploying redeploying all of the VMs once more with the new certificate authority. And we will label this as CA2. So CA1 in this video, and then CA2. The apply change is currently running, and we shall unpause the video momentarily.